Okay, good morning everybody. It's March, maybe the 8th or 7th, but it's a Thursday and I'm going to do, just decided real quick, like in 10 seconds to do it. But the other night I had one thought, I'll cover a few uh, issues and teaching, but I have a lot of verses posted. I showed you those before all over the place. And I usually pick one like, well, what one will I see in the morning after I do my routine? The other day I looked at the poster. It's an actual poster I bought a while ago. Some of you might be familiar with these. They, it's beautiful, like a uh, scroll poster. has all the names or all the ways that Jesus is described in the New Testament. I am the door. I am the way, the truth, and the life. And so it's got all of them. And I just caught, there's one I circled a long time ago, just said Bishop of Souls. So it's a scripture, <laughs> Shepherd and Bishop of souls and that night or the next night I try to look for a confirmation in my reading and I have about seven or ten uh, spots in the Bible where they're marked but it's not coordinated except it's the next chapter so I have some in the Old Testament and when it's time to go to Exodus or to one of the prophets they're marked so I'm not picking something I think sounds the same so my reading that night, like a night ago, was John 10, which is uh, the shepherd of the sheep, Jesus as a shepherd. My sheep hear my voice, and they follow me, and they will not follow the voice of a stranger. And so that was John 10, and the next book marked in the book of Psalms was, of course, Psalms 23. I didn't know, but I turned to it, and the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want, I shall not lack he leads me beside the still waters so that was just interesting and it was ways that are not real big but like you're saying those are confirmations that god gives to us now recently and i would not make a video just to talk about like some i'm not sure who has i have so many sides and so someone or some group somewhere has decided more than likely to, and it has to be someone or a group that's able to contact, there's like over a hundred sites, cloud sites, video sites, and all of it. And so someone's kind of trying to get us off the internet completely. Now, what I do is I navigate, and I'm going to teach a little bit more, but I navigate in ways that because I do it, and I'm not bragging that I'm doing it myself. Uh, there's videos I like on YouTube on business and outreach. And one is called the One Person Business Model. There, there are a few good YouTube uh, videos on that. And I liked it. And the original person, I won't mention his name. He seems like a nice younger guy. But at first, I liked it because I believe that it is possible in our day to do the one person business model meaning we live in a day where you can use these things. And one person, by the grace of God, can reach out. I will exalt you horn like the horn of unicorn, John the Baptist, the voice of one crying in the wilderness, prepare you the way the Lord makes straight in the desert, a highway for our God. But eventually he added like a team, and on one of his videos he said, well, I'm going to change the definition now of one person business model. I'm still going to call it that, but he hired some people, which is fine. But I don't know, brother, it, you know, I like the idea of the one-person business model, that everyone can be real effective. But someone's attacked a lot of our online sites. And so I just at times say, Lord, I don't know who, there's too many in a one-person business model. I cannot fight everybody. So uh, there's techniques, and, uh, meaning in the sense that I'll, I have backup systems and things like that. But the... Uh, Real victory that I initially understood that we needed to do was communicate both through video and through text or recording, but to have everything available where people take it. So I have little uh, notes that remind me, all is online now, all is done. Server has all backup. So I have three backup external drives, which I developed over time you know, one TV, external drive, and my videos I do in a low quality on purpose, 
because you can save on all video sites if it's a lower quality. If you do a high def, then you can put like 30 videos on a, one TV. But if you do a low definition, you could have about 8,000 videos on a one TV external drive. So there's little things you learn over time. But the purpose I had was these reminders that if anything ever goes down, don't trust in cloud storages because I won't mention the most recent one, but they can, they're just like anybody else. In the world of what we do, the reason they use the term cloud storage was to give people the impression that everything is uploaded somewhere in the sky. And that is absolutely not true. Cloud storage is simply another person's computer on a large scale, okay? Databases, and if you ever looked at some of the engineering of uh, websites, Facebook and all of them, they have huge, huge mega databases all over the world with, you know, millions of computers. So cloud storage is simply that, as well as the internet. You do have some advancement now with uh, various individuals <laughs> to do things with satellite. But the internet, 99% of the internet is also not in the sky. It's in fiber optic cables that cover the earth, that cover the globe. If you ever looked at videos of it, it's quite interesting. So it's really grounded, but I like the concept of the cloud. But the cloud is, is they do that for people to think. So anything that you have on cloud storage, don't trust that. Okay, most people should learn by now. Because a cloud storage site, like any other site, and if they have a particular bias or people complain, they can say, we cut you off. But the end result, the end goal, was to communicate the word, the Logos, and for that to eventually be a blessing planted in the hearts and minds of people who believe, which we call different terms, born again, regeneration, the seed of the word of God. Once it gets in the hearts of people, the preaching the gospel to all the nations, that is that never goes away. And there's a day we win in the end because there's a day that that communication of the gospel of Christ, the truth of the world, is embedded in people, all believers at this very moment. And then when you die, there's some confusion I've seen over the years. Good Christian friends that did not know the simple basics of this, so I'll do it right now. When you die as a Christian, your spirit, your soul, is immediately in the presence of God. Though some have what you call soul sleep, but the majority is myself. When you die, you go right into the presence of God as a believer. And I've had a lot of good Christian friends ask me, but well, John, is that the resurrection of the body yet? I said, well, no, my friend. I said, the resurrection of the body takes place at the return of Jesus Christ, bodily at the second coming of Christ. Then those who have died, Paul in First Thessalonians, First Thessalonians chapter 4. <laughs> the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with the shout, with the voice of the archangel, with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together to meet the Lord in the end. So shall we ever be with the Lord. And so when the Lord returns, the spirits and souls of all who have believed are then coming back and that's the resurrection of the dead for them bodily. And then we which are alive and remain, for First Thessalonians 4, shall also be changed in a moment, twinkling of an eye. So when the believer dies at this point in life, he's in the presence of God, but the resurrection body has not occurred yet. We are living now, and the generation that is alive at the return of Christ physically to the earth called the second coming, that we, that generation has changed in a moment to the glorified body. The New Testament teaches as the same glorified body of Jesus Christ when he rose from the dead. We will partake of that glorification in a resurrection body. 
that does not take place until the return of the Lord. So all of our uh, believing loved ones who have died are not raised physically yet from the death, and that takes place at the return of the Lord. That's the resurrection of the body. So being that I've had multiple friends confused on that, I figured I'd explain it now. But we win in the end because my little uh, talk about trying to make sure that the words we're communicating, whether written or, or uh, audio or visual recording, that they are going to remain for the benefit, even after our departure from this earth. The New Testament apostles wrote things like that, uh, that they would put these things down. We have the canon of the New Testament. So after they died, the message would go forth. But how do we ultimately win in all these battles for the communication of various words that are going for? That logos, that communication, that gospel, that truth of God through Christ abides with us forever. There'll be a resurrection at the end of this period of time. And when we come into a new heavens and new earth, well, you're not going to have any of those databases or cloud sites or anything. It's going to be a new creation, but what will survive that? All the people of God, that this word Logos has been implanted in us. Born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible, by the word of God which liveth and abideth forever. We will still be praising in the new creation. We will still be testifying and saying, praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise him, all creatures here below. So that message of the gospel, that so many hate and so many try to fight against. They'll all be gone someday. All of the very unique, wonderful engineering we have, I'm speaking to you on one of them right now, a smartphone, all of that passed away one day. But that testimony of the Lord embedded in the people of God throughout generations will continue to survive even in the resurrection body at the end with the actual physical Lord Jesus Christ himself, who the scripture said is seated at the right hand of the throne of God, who will indeed come again to judge the living and the dead. So I, now the point I make is we win because the communication of the Logos, which is the Greek word for word, John chapter 1, in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. That continues. That continues. And there'll be a future, a wonderful future, where that will always be, and it is always now. It's an eternal word. For I read John's Gospel, Jesus speaking to the sisters of Lazarus, who had died. He said to one of the sisters that said to Jesus, If you had been here, my brother would not have died. Because Lazarus, who was uh, the brother of Martha and Mary, were friends with Jesus. And they sent word. And they were in the town, I believe, in Bethany, the town called Bethany. They sent word to Jesus, your friend Lazarus is sick. This is recorded in John's Gospel. But then Jesus purposely, Bible students know, purposely waited. And then he told the disciples, now we've got to go see Lazarus because he is sleeping. And the disciples say to Jesus, well, if, if he is sleeping, that's good. He's doing well. And Jesus, it says, frankly told them, he is dead, but let's go. And then the sisters come out and greet him. They say, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. And he said to her, do you believe in the resurrection? Her answer was, I know at the last day that there's a resurrection. He says, I tell you the truth, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. Believe a sound this, and she believed. Then he raises Lazarus from the dead, who is dead the longest of any of the resurrections recorded in Scripture, Bollywood. So he's been dead, I believe it says, four days already. Lord, he stinketh, and he raised him from the dead. Lazarus come forth. And it's so interesting because the mind that came, if you will, the religious mind that came against Jesus, they were grateful that Lazarus was raised. But then you read in the Gospel, then they started having questions, the ones that hated Christ and the movement. They said, maybe we should put Lazarus to death or get, kill him too, because many are believing on Christ. Don't forget to love your brother. 
Don't forget, as steeped as those people who conspired to kill you, they, was, they were founding your belief system, if you will, on the Ten Commandments, which was fine for the religious mind, the Pharisee of the first century. And one of them is don't kill. And then they're already in their religious mind. It was that view of their holiness, their Pharisee, Sadducee stance. They said, we must stop this movement of Jesus. For they were convinced he was a demoniac. He was the son of God. And he said, you say I blaspheme. He said, if I call myself, I said, I was sent from God. And you say, I blaspheme. Is it not written in your law? Jesus responds and quotes that song. It says, unto whom the world will came, the scripture says, it came. Did he not call them God's little G, unto whom the world will came? Jesus quoting the song. And if you say, I, who have been sanctified, separated, and I'm coming here to fulfill the will of my form, and the scripture cannot be broken, he told me. But they just didn't know it. So, this logos, this word, this testimony, it will prevail forever. Don't trust in the cloud. <laughs> Never. And learn some things that it's not a cloud. It's cables underground connected to giant computers. And the people that run those things, whether it be a social media, cloud, or any of it, they are just as political as anybody else. And if they decide, let's shut them off. So that maybe I give you a few little points in that. Now, I do not want to cover, I think I told on this, and I'd hate to give it a terrible title because in the future I'm going to repost even the ones that have titles that don't sound like, oh, that would sound like a bad video. I read the news every day. Today I did a lot of work. How do I respond when um, some of my sites, like a, a group attack, wh wherever it came from, I launch a bunch of new ones. It's a principle. So a bunch of India sites, China, very hard to get into China. It opened. Uh, Japan, the rooms, I pray, the rooms of the Orient. Let your spirit go to the land of the rising sun. So strange because the, as they opened up in the last three days, Japan and China, China is very hard. I tried that before. And I got in, and there's not cheating, but the technical barriers. And I thought, how come I got in now? And I accidentally joined a very famous Chinese company, which is the head of TikTok and Duan, which is a Chinese version of TikTok, which preceded TikTok, Duyin. But I was going to try to get into Duyin, but the company is called ByteDance, B-Y-T-E-D-A-N-C-E. -E. So I joined Bike Dance as a member, but that's just a member of the company. But my Gmail showed up on the profile, and I thought they maybe realize I'm connected with TikTok and the others. So if you're on a few that are Chinese and you're already uh, approved to be that way on the other ones, I think that gives you more favor. So I accidentally, I was looking for Duyan, which is the Chinese TikTok, which has 650 million. Uh, users, but I accidentally joined the parent company, and then when I went down the line, I got into a few other very difficult oriental sites, and I looked even this morning, I have a, a north, south, east, and west, one of those plaques, it's been here for years, and I just noticed it's in the, it's an oriental writing, I just never caught that before. So what the principle is this, there'll be people that will fight, and so I've had that the last few weeks, and they'll fight, and they'll fight, and I, I can spend so much time, you know, if they want to do things, just keep moving, just keep moving, this, this testimony Lord ultimately is dependent upon people believing in Jesus Christ, being born again of the incorruptible seed, which is the word of God, and that's the thing that's going to last. That's, that's this faith that we have, that in the end, everything is going to be administrated by a just and merciful and holy God. I, I have to my left here the Ark of the, a model of the Ark of the Testament I showed various times to you over the years. 
Oh, I don't know if I have to keep showing it every time I talk. So it's the model of the Ark. And in, and in that box, the Ark of the Testament, it's not Noah's Ark. It's the Ark or the box that God instructed Moses to build, to put into it the two tablets of the Ten Commandments. And so it went into that box, and that's the Old Testament Moses tabernacle system, which eventually the, the temple that Solomon builds is patterned after that system. But it says, and I showed it on the last video then, but on the, on the lid of that ark, and Moses was instructed to put these two uh, statues of cherubim or angels on the lid. And that lid is called the mercy seat. And that name is the same out of the Old Testament, which is written in Hebrew. <laughs> but it's the same concept in First John is the propitiation, the acceptable sacrifice. So it says in First John, he is the, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins, to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Well, he is the propitiation for our sins. That same term is used for that lid there on the ark. And so what you had in the ark was the law of God in the ark, which was so holy and righteous and just the character of God. And God could not tabernacle among the old covenant community with the sinfulness of the way man was and is. So there was a system of sacrifice developed, priesthood. I'm reading Exodus again. And so that lid, you have the famous stories of Raiders of the Lost Ark and so forth in the Jones, based on this idea that there was this electrical power, you know. But when the lid, because we read in the Old Testament story, maybe Samuel, but when certain times when you uh, disgrace the Ark and you didn't follow the prescribed thing, people would die. Some famous stories of that people preached on over the years. But why is that lifting up of the lid and like people got wiped out, and that's the basis of those movies. It wasn't that it was electrical power. It represented this righteous holiness of God with these tablets that were in it. And sinful man could not be in the presence of God. And so it was showing that there was not a sufficient sacrifice for sin yet. And don't take off that lid, because the righteous, pure holiness of God, man cannot live in it until he's redeemed by the future coming of the Passover land, also typified in the story of Moses in the Old Testament. And so the lid simply represented the mercy to, to keep that judgment from coming. But I like the idea of the mercy seat. I like the idea that the two angels, it says cherubim overshadowing the mercy seat. I have those things written down. So, because we also have to always remember, there was not, I won't uh, give it the bad title, but it could have been a title like all the, all the things that are being revealed, the sinful things taking place with ministries and so forth. I just thought, and it's good Christians, one that was, one was just like exposed in an online article, I won't do the whole thing, but it mentioned, and this worship leader was, at a church in Corpus Christi in the article, which is right down the block, which I've been to that church. I remember when this worship leader was there, famous worship leader exposed on an article today coming out on one of the Christian sites. So I thought, what if, and I won't title it that, but what if I made a video of a particular whoever it was and said, we have a picture or video of you whoever it is, but you don't know that somebody from your past, if you're 50 or 60 or 30, and you might say, oh, maybe I had a boyfriend when I was 17, but that was before I was a Christian or whatever. But say if I, whoever it could apply to, and say if I said, and that video of you, whoever it is, investigative reporter, everybody, I said, and I'm going to post it because it's sin that you committed. And if the person said, but you know, I repented of that, or it's, so I think the online thing is wonderful, me speaking right now, but remember these, the mercy seat, remember, rem I have it written right there, prepare mercy and truth 
which may preserve you. I have it written here, and Moses truly was faithful in all his house as a servant for a testament of those things which be spoken after. So I'll end it with some teaching I read the, uh, in the prophet Daniel, Daniel 12. It said he did not get these experiences that he could not fully comprehend. He says, and it's a mixture of Habakkuk, Daniel, Haggai. and says, go your way, Daniel. Go your way on this journey I've called you to. And the testimony, seal that word, seal that testimony. Because at the end it will speak and not lie. Though it tarry, wait for it because it will surely come. And it says in Daniel, Daniel 12. Some believe the only reference to the internet is in Daniel 12. When it says knowledge will go forth and be increased. But it's also the great chapter where it talks about many should be raised at the dust of the earth. Some to shame and everlasting contempt but some to life. And when the day of the Lord comes, it's a day of judgment that takes place even in throughout your life. Paul says the day would declare it. If that would, if you can make it through that day, of, in Joel 2, when it talks about the day of the Lord, just Peter quotes that in Acts chapter 2, but it's talking about a day of judgment. And the army spoken about in Joel 2 is not the army of Christians marching on to war, but it's the army of judgment that God said come, came against his people. And then you have the promise of restoration and pouring out its spirit on all flesh of your sons and daughters prophecy. But that day comes to so many people. I collected more cases. I spoke on one in the last video, but I collect those. I, re, I collect them spiritually, pray for them, because in every one of those cases, people whether it's murder that was hidden up, this one they saw yesterday in Virginia, 35-year-old murder case unsolved, they believe. But when that day comes, there's a scripture that says, ask the Lord if there's any, ever been any great thing, is this great thing? You, me, all of us, ask him, you can ask him too. Have any people ever heard the voice of God speaking out of the fire and have lived as you have done? There are some people that will go through that day of the Lord and survive and live and come out the other side. And Daniel said, some will wake from the dust of the earth to judgment, to their final day and the ultimate judgment after death at the resurrection. But some will wake out of that dust of the earth and be able to say, have anybody ever heard the voice of God speaking out of the fire as you have done and have lived? And then you ask the Lord, has there ever been any great thing, whatever it is God is doing to you, is this thing that God has done? That can be personalized to everybody. If you walk that path that God has ordained for you. So I would just say this. As we, uh, and I won't do too much on when I mentioned the critique of the Christian brother that today, some Christian brothers and sisters. But remember this, those who are critiquing other Christians, whether it's through an online magazine, the way I do these things. If the title was, I won't put it that, but if the title was the name of whoever the critiquer is and says, I have evidence of your sins. But you know, you could do that without a video. You could say, all have sinned, come short of the glory of God. All of you, all of us. And that's not, I say that not to justify sin in the church. But I say that, there's a balance between exposing this in Galatians, the Apostle Paul says, if any brother or sister is overtaken in the fall, ye which are spiritual, restore such a one in the spirit of meekness, considering yourself lest you also be tempted. And so the point I would make is, it's good if we have to deal with sin in the church, but some of the articles I read even today, it's almost like you got just you have to balance and remember that there was this mercy seat. There was this strict commandments that could have been if any human being was placed against those without the propitiation of the mercy seat. No one would stand. And so as we are doing this work of the kingdom of God and communicating, just just be gracious to remember. Mercy. Let mercy and truth both preserve me. I think I, I probably could share a few of the things, but I think I'm in and on that. So that's the way I deal with the online attacks, meaning people trying to get all our platforms now. 
and it's it's coordinated. So it's had to be a whole bunch of people. And I can't fight everybody. There'll be a few you might know me make a, a mention on Facebook or whatever. But there's so many platforms. What I just do is strengthen the bars of these gates. Bless our children with them. Sometimes there's a scripture I've written, let the angels of the Lord chase them. I pray blessings upon them. I often say, Father, whoever's coming against us, I pray blessings upon them right now. Jesus said, do that, and then fire comes. But there is a scripture I've written on the wall, let the angels of the Lord chase them. And so there are times you're saying, God uh, prevail in the sea. So I just continue in the last five days, China, uh, Japan. I could have got some more India, but I got a lot of Indies. So there's about six or seven new ones that really are uh, more beneficial anyway than any of the others that people attacked us on. So what we pray now is a blessing, Father, I thank for all my friends. I pray that you give them insight. Maybe they got to re-listen to this, or all of them. <laughs> Help people download and keep the ones that they think are important. Not that uh, it, we all die someday. So what we want to do is make sure whatever we're communicating to build the people of God, push forward this kingdom of God, that it would continue to move forward. So I ask that you bless everybody, inspire them, empower them to realize we live in a day and a time where this revolution of the kingdom of God is among us. What, get out of the city and dwell in the fields. Even in Babylon, there I'll be with you. There I'll deliver you from the hand of the enemy. God bless everybody. Oh, let me end this. I have a hard time shipping my phone. I can't speak for another hour.